spoken lately. I haven't thought about flying for a long time. I haven't dreamed of that moment when I was alone above the clouds for a long time. I have dreamed of waking up in a room surrounded in blue and green grass for more years than I could dream of memory. I haven't walked back into the past or scratched on the doors of my origins, where it all came from, since I held up that cape for the last time. Return to Kent Town 10th year anniversary edition is a revised version of Andy Ann's first poetry book. The book can be purchased from Amazon and it contains numerous additional material. Spoken Label Hi, it's Andy Ann from Spoken Label. Thank you today for streaming or downloading another episode of Spoken Label. Spoken Label was originally set up on the beginning of 2016 and as of speaking has currently nearly 300 sessions. The full archive is available on Spoken Label full stop bandcamp.com although it is available for free for stream and download if you wish. I am always grateful for any sort of kind of donation to enable me to keep the running costs of this podcast going. And enjoy. Take care. Bye-bye. Spoken Label. Hi guys, Andy N. Spoken Label. Back in the house. We're up in the Petersgate Tap today in Stockport. It's a lovely bar. This one I've never been here before, actually. I knew where it was because People know what wonder where this bar is. It's very near the Witherspoons now, and me and Amanda, we know, we know the Witherspoons. <laughs> well, I've never been here before, so. But anyway, I have two ladies with me today. International flavour as well. Now, these ladies definitely hold the record for the furthest guests I've ever spoke to. They're in person as well, so obviously I get international flavour with me, so. Okay, ladies, you want to both tell everybody who you are? Well, I'm Skylar J Winter and I'm absolutely wrapped to be sitting here with you Andy because we've been chatting for oh, a long time now, I wouldn't even know how long, but um, <laughs> certainly over a year yeah. and um, and yeah, it's an absolute <coughs> pleasure to finally meet you in person and be here and I've brought Neshka along with me. Yes, for hello. Yeah. Hello, I'm uh, Neshka Turner, I'm an artist who works very closely with Skylar J Winter on a beautiful book Shine and we've done a couple of other things and we are the Artistic World Enterprises and we're oh. doing a decent things tour. Yes, you are. Now, people are wondering, obviously, well, come, I've, I first heard of this, you, t- you told me about this a couple of months ago, Skylar, didn't yeah. you? So, and what you're doing both here, touring up and down England, aren't you? And you're doing, you're doing a date in Paris as well, did you say, yes. and in Europe as yep, well? we are. Now, obviously, we're going to tell people, obviously, what's going on then, so... Because obviously I know Stockport here, where we are today, is one of your first dates, isn't it, on the tour? So, so it's our second one. So yeah. we had one in Aberdeen uh, at the Blue Lamp with Finn Hall. Who oh, runs, the um, adorable Finn yes, Hall. Yes, I yes. love Finn. Oh, I know. And we actually posted a video afterwards because Finn, we, Molly, who is an artist, Andy, that I know you want to interview. Uh, for your trying, podcast, to, trying to pin that young lady down, down yeah, is really so very, we, very we, hard. We yes, got, Molly, got, get in touch. <laughs> <laughs> we got to see her live in person. She's amazing and Yes. Yeah, if you yes. can get, if you can pin her down, I think yes. She's I might there. literally have to go and fly up to Aberdeen and yeah. pin her against the wall. Yeah. No, I'm not. <laughs> well, that doesn't sound good. No, that sounds very. <laughs> I think we'll change topics there. Yeah, That's yeah, good. Yeah. Gotcha. Let's just move right along yeah. from there. Now, obviously, um, obviously, I know you both bought. You've been We've been doing your tour now. Yeah. You bought a joint book out, haven't you? Yeah. Called Shine. Yeah. So I want to ask you both first of all, then, obviously, before we get onto the, the process of the book, how did you both meet? Um, so both, we both had uh, we met about seven or seven years ago, and um, we both had um, sons in the same class at school, and we had moved into the area, and Neshka had as well. So we were just new mums at a, at a new school with our boys, and um, and our boys became friends, and then yeah, we just became friends because Neshka's adorable, and you can't <laughs> love her. <laughs> we, we didn't have a choice. Our sons became friends, so we had to become friends. No. <laughs> well, well I take it. Did you both stand out in school? Did as it? unique artistic people and well, completely the, different from no, everybody else. Not at the time. Because, not at, not at um, the beginning. At, no, because no, at the time I was actually um, extremely uh, 
hesitant to even be in public. I, I was not long out of um, a traumatic event and um, so actually moving to Perth meant that I could be closer to getting the treatment I needed for PTSD. So wow. yeah, so when Neshka and I first met, I was actually extremely um, reclusive and didn't, you know, barely got out of the house kind of thing. So um, yeah, just kind of after a while, obviously with our sons wanting playdates and all the, that kind of thing, then I, you know, once I started feeling safe with various people in various environments, then I kind of come out of my shell. So oh, that's yeah. that's very good to know that I didn't make you feel safe yes. because we we started doing things together, and yeah. I wasn't um, doing art at that time, not um, oh, exclusively. So no, no. I was so it's like you've been both encouraging each other, haven't you? Didn't really. So um, not so much encourage. Well, encouragement definitely, but. I, I think I just got the inspiration mostly from Skylar, so I, I think it was more one way. I, I don't think I inspired Skylar. I think <laughs> Skylar inspired me. Oh, like, that's, yes. that's not true. No. But anyway. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to say no comment. Yeah, we're, we're not, I'm not going to start arguing with Neshka because Neshka's Polish and you don't argue with a Polish person because you will never, never win. I was so. going to ask you Neshka <laughs> when you're Polish because I've dated two ladies that were Polish, actually. <laughs> <laughs> I, got, I, was oh. not, I got the accent straight away. I, wasn't, I, I yeah. thought myself, it's, it's not an obvious Australian accent, that's <laughs> no, for sure. No, it's not. No, I have been uh, living in Australia since 1987, but I have not lost the accent. So, yeah, I still read, write, and speak Polish as well as English. English was my fourth language I had to learn. Oh, you're embarrassing me now, because I can't even speak English properly. <laughs> <laughs> don't worry, I don't speak any of them properly. Well, maybe Polish, but, yeah. <laughs> oh, brilliant. Enough. Well, so great in the soldier. Tell us about, then, obviously, we're going to, we'll talk about the book now, obviously, The Shine itself. I want to talk about the tour. We'll do the tour yeah, in yeah. a few minutes now. Obviously, um, I know you've done a book before, Skylar. This is technically your second book, isn't yes. it? So, yep. now, tell us about Shine, then. Okay. What, first of all, why Shine as a title? Okay, so um, so basically Neshka did the cover for my first book and that is, and I loved it so much and we worked so well together that I then, I had always had this um, desire because I, I absorb information on lots of levels so it was always my desire to create a book that was poetry and art and after she did the cover for my first book it was like, okay, well you've got to do all the artwork for my second book please and she said yes. Um, now the reason it became Shine was because... Um, I had just been focusing on how I wanted my year to look going into 2021. Mm. And and I just came up with this word. This word just kept coming into my head, which was shine. And it was like, yeah, I just wanted to um, have that year, 2021, of really stepping into myself. I um, received some really good treatment for my PTSD and I was coming into a place um, where I was starting to feel... Um, more comfortable in the poetry realm and I'd made lots of great friends online and um, yeah and I just thought yeah no this is the year I've got to step up and really and really do my thing and create this this book that I'd been dreaming of so um, so being that that word kept coming into my head that just had to be the title of the book. I think it's always the usual case and I know with all the books out the good books I've done each book I've known what the title of the book was going to be before I even started writing it. Yeah. But I know Amanda, my wife, she, she's a way around. She'll write a book, then I wish to at least one novelise where she's got to the end of it and she's been asking me for weeks, you've got a title, you've got a title. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it works either way with me. Like my first book, I didn't, I had a title about halfway through. Shine was just always going to be Shine and it was always, like I always knew exactly how it was going to look and that it was based on the hero's journey of, you know, having... Um, having hardship and then you know having realizations and learning and then coming out the other end transformed because that was kind of, had kind of been my journey so that was all kind of um very planned out which is quite unusual for me because i am a pantser when it comes to writing and i just write whatever comes to me so there's not normally a plan so this was a bit unusual i think it is when you're doing it have you ever do a collaboration with people yeah it's like i've done i've worked i've worked with bands of people i've done i've done a number of split books as well it's mostly with amanda but also my friend nick yeah. and it's like i think when you work a co-worker people who's an artist or a writer yeah. it's what you would do in the book will change because yeah. you're working with each other yeah. so nishka tell us about then obviously your the case and with the art in this then well, I first of all, I was incredibly honoured to be asked to do the cover for the first book, and that's how the journey started. So, Skylar has seen my artwork 
coming to my house and it's just hanging everywhere and here and there and drawing and I doodle when I go places and she says I want you to do my cover so I have done the cover and we worked so beautifully and it was it was lots of bouncing ideas for the cover because she had she had an image for it but then we couldn't meet that because of restraints of what could be printed so we worked on it um, for a bit and we had a beautiful relationship so when Skala asked me to do to work on shine with her I said that's wonderful but um, it, the, the way we structured the work was and and this is this is both that we agreed on that I um, I pretty much got the poetry from Skala read it all got incredibly inspired and the drawings were just pouring out of me so that's pretty much most of the poetry is my image of the feelings the words that are throughout the book yes a few of the poems i did have trouble with and this is when the more collaboration came skyla would um recite the poems for me because it is totally different when you hear it when someone else says it uh, we would um talk about what would be the best image for a specific poem where i did not have the immediate response um we there was also poems in the in the book that um skyla knew exactly what she wanted and she asked me to portray that and then I would do a few different sketches and she would say yay or nay. Um, yeah, and I can tell stories about a couple of those poems if you like. But yeah, so it was it was a long process but it, we worked really well together on it and yeah, and we, we opened to do more and we might work the other way as well but uh, specifically this time I really wanted to illustrate or, or do art about the poems that have been written. I was wondering about that, how, mm. how, how it worked with the pair of you, yeah. like, because I know people have done, done collaborations against this before now, and sometimes the process changes when, and I'm not going to, I know two people have done this, and, and when they started it off, it was the other way around, where the actual poets started it off and the artists followed, yes. but I've known it happened the other way as well. Yes, yes. So, I don't yes. there's no, no right or wrong way with it. No, no, this is no, how and it worked. And I did offer that Dineshka, Absolutely. I said to Neshka, yeah. um, because the book is in three parts, and I did say to Neshka, you know, so for a lot of these poems that I haven't even written yet, these are the words around yep. the poems that I'm like hoping to capture. These are the images I'm hoping to capture. So I said, do you want to start doing some um, illustrations, you know, just using those, just those specific words as triggers, and then I'll write a poem to whatever you create. And she, and she sort of had to think about it. And she's like, no, 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 I just Not want you to write the words. Yeah. 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 So, but next book, mate. Yeah, we're yeah. we definitely open to changing the process around it, but this really worked for us, it worked for me, it worked for Skylar. And yeah. Of course. Yeah. I think yeah. I'm always a believer as well, when you're doing sort of collaboration like this, it impacts the way you work to change, and I think at the end of it, it's a journey for yourself as well as actually what make, it makes you different people sometimes yeah. in a good way. Absolutely. Yeah. Yes. That's why you both hinted already there's another book to come anyway. Yeah. So <laughs> now we'll it's come on to that in a bit because obviously yeah. I want to get onto the tour next, yeah. obviously. Okay, yeah. the Decent Beings tour. Yeah. Now, first of all, why Decent Beings? Um, so for me, my experience um, in the last sort of seven years <coughs> since, um, since I had some trauma in my life. Um, you know, you go to very dark places and, um, you know, all of us, all of us have had traumatic things in our life or whatever and we all get through them in our own way. But for me, I think the thing that really came out of it was that there are some really decent people in the world and I think actually um, because of the trauma, because of where I went and the dark place that I went to, even though I had a family and all the rest of it, uh, it gave me a lot of insight into the fact that you know it's very easy to just judge people like we're all walking around with these ideas in our head about what something means like what what certain words mean or what certain images mean and and so uh, we naturally just have these ingrained opinions in us uh you know inherited beliefs or whatever and i think but beneath all of that are really decent humans and essentially we all just want to feel seen we all just want to feel heard loved safe you know the real basic necessities and uh there's so many problems in the world that we just we, you know it was very overwhelming for me because i feel a lot uh and i feel too much in some sense and for me to be able to cope with actually being in the world 
and not being torn apart by it and all the pain in it, uh, I had to come to a place where it was like, okay, so I can't fix the whole world, I'm just this one person, what, what can I do? And it just came down to the basic thing of just getting up every day and going, I know nothing, therefore I'm willing to learn something and today I'm just going to be decent to the people that come into my sphere, you know, if that, that's all I can do. And then maybe if more and more and more people on an individual level start practicing that, we can see bigger changes. I don't know. But um, so yeah, so this, this tour was born of that and then it was born of me wanting to be able to create workshops that would provide people who wouldn't necessarily have the money to be able to go and um, do workshops to be able to attend them so we've raised money so that we can provide them for free and so it's just about being able to give to people so that you know maybe next time they're in a really bad place they can draw on some of the things they might have learned and not necessarily take the dark route that they might have taken otherwise so just... well, good luck good luck to the pair of you definitely <laughs> yeah. Yeah. now obviously we have to obviously go through the tour itself yeah yes now I'll let you give all the dates to people, and obviously you've told us originally you've done. You've people wondering on the date of recording. This is your second date. Yep. You flew, you drove down, not drove down. You came on the train, right, right. down Bedeem before, which is a seven-hour train journey, yeah. which, which turned into a twelve-hour one. Yeah. <laughs> Whatever. I've done, I've done that from Bournemouth, from Brighton before, which is down towards yes, London way. Yeah. And that's turned into 13 hours before oh, an hour. That's not very <laughs> <laughs> well, that's, it's five or six hours, and yeah. it turns into 13 hours. So it's like, yeah. so obviously, tell us about Aberdeen first thing. Because I know you mess up that. Obviously, my internet friend, Finn Holder, I've not met myself yet, and I yeah. would love to someday. Yeah. Well, love Finn him. is the absolute most delightful human. Um, and this is where we just feel really blessed. And I hate throwing that word around because I know it's like this trendy word. Oh, we're so blessed. But we actually, honestly, from the bottom of my heart, Finn is just the most adorable human being. Um, he just he, he just does... The thing I love about Finn is he's just quietly going about doing the thing that he loves. He's not wanting accolades. He's not doing it for fame and fortune. He just loves his poetry and he loves providing a safe space for people to come and poet and that's what he's doing yeah he's also incredibly supportive oh, of these statements yes, yes. we're gonna make the guy blush now but it's true Finn yeah, yeah. <laughs> like he always gets when I see him on zoom readings I know you've just seen it he always does it he always stops at 10 minutes while he's working yeah. as a taxi driver yeah, yeah, yeah. absolutely we love it um so yeah so and so he picked us up the afternoon of the actual event at the um at the blue lamp and he took us to the ca a castle and he spent the afternoon with us and we went out to tea before for the event and everything he's just lovely really yes. just generous kind caring wonderful person with a story of his own and he's just doing his thing so we had got a beautiful reception there got to meet a whole heap of uh, spoken word artists um, the in Aberdeen who came along to the event it was really well supported so yeah it was really a great now obviously start. we're in the Peter's Gate Tavern today tonight pardon me I, it's just turned I think it's five o'clock actually or well, nearly five o'clock so who knows what we're going to get here tonight at yeah. seven, so hopefully it'll be a good one. So tell us about the rest of the tour then, where are okay. going? So yeah, so tonight um, we have got the Peace Gate Tap event, um, which is going to be starting at seven o'clock. And then from tomorrow we're heading up to Derry, um, jumping on a plane and heading to Derry. And Derry's where we're going to be doing our very first workshop. Um, the workshops are called A Time for Joy. So uh, Mel Bradbury up there has organised that for us. Cool. Um, and then uh, on the 9th of October, we're actually recording um, a show for Hannah's Bookshelf. Oh, oh yeah, you got into Hannah's yes, idea. Oh, yes, oh you yes, superstars. Well, yeah, so we were very, very blessed for that. So we're recording that, but it won't be aired until the 19th, I think. Um, when we first arrived in uh, Windsor, we recorded a show for Fiona Hooper, who does poetry and painting. That's going to go um, to air on the 15th. So, yeah, there's a couple of sort of recordings that are happening. Yeah, we're hoping to get friend Ruth down to do a bit for you later on. So Ruth O'Reilly yeah. from All FM. So, Which is yeah. awesome. That'd be wonderful. Um, we'll and then, yeah, then we're heading um, after Derry, we're heading down to Hertfordshire. We're hoping we haven't actually locked in any events there. That's just a few down days for Nash and I to kind of gather ourselves um, because we've been sort of full on since we got here but we are hoping to lock in um, our workshop there uh, then on the what have we got then the 11th oh I've got my pages mixed up <laughs> that's fairly typical of me um, so the 12th we head over to Wales Wales to yep. Swansea yep um, yeah, so on the 12th we head to, um, to Wales on the 13th we have um, an event at the Ur HQ Urban Kitchen 
from 7 till 10 15. Oh, that's who, who's doing who doing that event then? So that's live poets with uh, Rhoda Thomas and Tim Evans. I've spoke to Rhoda, I don't know yep. Tim. Yep, yep. <laughs> Rhoda's lovely. <laughs> so, they, so they're a wonderful group and they're also in the process right as we speak we're locking in a workshop for the 14th um, so that will be brilliant. Then on the 15th we that's when Jeff um, Jeff Cottrell, 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 Cottrell arrives. Yeah. And I've actually met Jeff actually. Oh, in person? Yeah, in person. Oh, awesome. I, I think I'm right with Jeff for this because I know he's Canadian. Yes. And he's, if my memory is correct, he lived in Manchester about 15 years ago for a while. Really? Oh, I don't know that he. I don't. Do you I know think that he it's lived, him. I think it's him. He's either or he's got a doppelganger called well, Jeff. Well, he knows he UK. Well, he knows the UK. He's mm. actually toured the UK. He said he's been and toured the UK and performed lots. So, um, so I don't doubt that that's true. But yes. he's never told me he lived here. But anyway. So well, even that, so even that toy, he was just passing through a yeah. couple of times. I've definitely met him two, three times. Yeah, so. yeah, you Great probably guy. would have. Great guy. He is. So, yeah, so he joins us on the 15th, <laughs> and that's when we um, have a, a, a an event at... Worcester, 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 Worcester. I can't. I can never say that word. And I see, you always um, find out the English pronunciation of it's yeah. something very different. Like if I came to Australia, and I know from no, we know from Polish people as well. Like you, the accent and we pronounce it is completely yeah. different from language yeah. to language. Yeah, you know? absolutely. Like Melbourne. Yeah, and we say we've got a place down south called Dunsborough, so we say Dunsborough, Dunsborough. but any English people or Canadians come and say Dunsborough. Dunsborough. Yeah, Dunsborough, that's great, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, so it's interesting, and I always hate saying things wrong because I feel like it's a bit offensive, but whatever. So we've got Worcester, then we've got Birmingham on the 16th, we've got Leeds, uh, Leeds on the 18th. Ooh, where, 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 which way out Leeds for them? Uh, Leeds is for Maximum Runcible Spoon, Spoon with Kathleen. Um, unfortunately, Kathleen has not been very well so someone else will be running it. Um, I hope that we get to meet Kathleen, but I'm not sure whether... It's we worth, if you both can get a chance, Leeds, go and look at the market and okay. the corner exchange, because Leeds isn't that far from me. I know, yeah. I know it quite well. Yeah, yeah. So that's... Um, I would advise to take, take a scarf for you as well, because it gets cold yeah. on there. <laughs> yeah, we've got plenty of warm um, <laughs> Then we've got uh, Leicester on the 20th. Ooh, um, what, what, what are you doing Run in Leicester? Your tongue. So that's Run Your Tongue with um, Rob Reeves. I don't know, sorry Rob, I don't know anything. Yeah. So <laughs> he's, been, he's been running an event for uh, a long time, so they've just had a change of venue, so that's new. Then 21st, we're heading to Stamford for the opening of the Cellar Bar. Um, that's with Gary Huskisson. Oh yeah, I spoke to Gary, yeah. Yep. yeah like, um, nice guy, Gary again. He's lovely. Uh, then he, the 22nd, it, was, it was a funny story about Gary, because he contacted me to come on and resume things once. Yeah. and didn't actually, oh, can you come and read my event? I said, what event is it? Oh, it's just an event. I thought, I don't know what's up there you're on about. <laughs> oh, yeah. Gary, Not very Gary, helpful. Gary me. is wonderful. Anyway, um, so we're catching up with him. Um, he's <coughs> organised a few events. So the next one's the 22nd of October in Peterborough at the Blind Tiger. And that's actually... Um, Less me, that's more Jeff. Um, he's doing a, like a comedy poetry night there. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. Uh, yeah and then on the 23rd, um, it's there's a women's poetry gig. I mean, men are welcome, of course, but it, it, Gary's yeah, But that's, that's more you two than Jeff in that case. Well, then. yeah, Gary's <laughs> focused on getting a whole bunch of uh, women spoken word artists from the area together, and that's at the Peterborough Museum Good. at 6 p.m. Yeah. Um, and then we travel to Paris, and on the 24th we've got um, Spoken Word Paris. <coughs> the La Chatte Noire. I know some of us read there, and they absolutely loved it. Yes. Because um, I've forgotten who it was as well. They told them they told about that where it's, it's, it's that sort of venue where half the people obviously can't speak English, yes, yes. but you get the feel from the languages. Yes. And I'm absolutely, I just, I love the sound of all languages, so I'm really excited about going so that I can hear a spoken word in uh, spoken in French, but I am very concerned that no one will understand a word I say because my poetry is quite Wait. fast. So anyway, and when I slow it down, it's really weird because you get used, your brain gets used to the rhythm, and so I find when I slow things down, I actually just forget the words. So anyway, yeah. so that's going to be interesting, but whatever. Uh, and then, then from Paris, we head to Derry. So and we've got three events in Derry. We've got one on the twenty. 6th when we arrive which is at Bennigan's Bar we've got another one on the 28th in Felcarra at Shamrock Bar and then our last event is in Belfast and I'm really excited about that because both Mel Bradbury and Kathy Carson are I was going to, going to ask you 
So, I was going to ask you going to meet Kathy because yes, yeah, yeah. So yeah. she's she's a lovely lady. And I remember I'm, I I've not met her myself. But I spoke to her on Zoom and yeah, yeah. Uh, bought some of the ratings I got on that podcast. Oh my ridiculous. god, yes. <laughs> she is amazing. She's an amazing. So is Mel. They're both both very strong uh, spoken word female artists and. Um, so the first time that we go to Derry, which is tomorrow, we're actually going up for Mel's one woman show, um, which will be amazing. Um, so, and I specifically, that was one of the reasons why our dates are set now instead of the summer, because I would much prefer to come to the UK yeah. in summer. But hey, it's so coming next time we do this again yeah. next time, yes. summer. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> and because and I'm, I'm awesome. not great in the cold, but, um, but I specifically timed it so that I could go to Mel's show because I've been talking with Mel about her show for about a year now. So it was, it was just always a given that I was going be here for her show so oh brilliant yeah. brilliant it's only got plenty to keep you both going there yes. anyway so <laughs> now obviously when you go back to australia i know we've had um there's one bit hint we've had off mic and one we've had in on mic yeah. so and you think about another book aren't you so the yes. pair of you so yes. is there any hints you could give about this well i could give you the title of the book because that's been decided <laughs> and i could give you one poem out of the book oh, if yes, you're please. interested yeah um, of course and yes yeah this is this is an exclusive because yeah no one notice knows. the word everybody yes. Exclusive. Exclusive, yes. Very <laughs> Okay, so the next book is going to be called Fucked Up Love Poems. Oh, that, that, that's eye-catching. I know, <laughs> and, um, and it's, it's, a real very, it's a very, very thorough exploration of love in all forms, love between parents, mothers, sons, um, you know, people, uh, like, you know, men, men, women, all the rest of it. It's, yeah, it's, it, it it's looks at love and all the very, very many perspectives. Um, so this poem I actually wrote for an event for Finn Hall, I think it was. Uh, he did a Valentine's Day event, or him and some others did a collaboration. So I wrote this quite a long time ago, so it's only ever been performed once, um, but it is going in the book, and it is called uh, Total Head Fuck. <laughs> uh, and this is how it goes. You sit across the bar with your wife. I am having a quiet drink alone before heading home for the night. But as your eyes drift harmlessly by, they catch mine and a slow burn ignites. Molten heat in a slow lava flow streams into my bloodstream, filling spaces unseen with need and nothing to impede the liquid desire, pooling and fueling the fire. I address you with my eyes while I'm dressing you with my mind, and I am inclined to think you don't mind as you take your own sweet time, sweeping your lust-filled eyes over my feminine lines. Our eyes brazenly flirt, I picture myself unbuttoning your shirt and sliding my palm across your chest. All anyone here sees is me palming my drink instead. Your mouth pulls back in a long, slow grin, and I wonder, would I like the taste of your skin if I were to run the tip of my tongue up your neck while inhaling your essence in one slow, inward breath? What would I find if I trailed my palm down in search of the sin buckled loosely beneath the waistband of those ass-hugging blue jeans? I am filled with yearning for all the things passion brings. All I want is your hand searing pathways on my skin I will long be remembering. Your wife is trying to speak and pulls you down so you can hear the words the noise of the bar has drowned. She captures your mouth in a lingering kiss and my heart skips. Your eyes tell the story before closing. You would rather it was me you were kissing. And when they finally open to meet mine again, you make it plain that any indication from me would see us engaging in what we would later describe as mind-blowingly sensational fucking. The slow burn catches fire. The back alley and you become an all-consuming desire, but I hold fast, wanting this moment to last, questioning if spontaneous orgasming is a real thing because in this moment, it sure as hell feels like it could be. So I am inclined to keep experimenting in an attempt to prove I can manifest anything if I focus hard on the imagining. Your lips finally break free from the one you should be bringing to ecstasy and I decide punishing you will be easy. I dip my finger in my scotch and dry and raise it dripping liquid fire to my lips drawing an outline before inserting it so I can taste it in the back of my throat where I would taste you. 
you swallow, and I know your throat is as dry as my finger is wet, and while you fumble for your drink, I sink into the fantasy of tearing off your shirt and making you my dessert, of you slamming my back hard against that alley wall so we can fuck hard and fast and primal pressing my glass up to my cheek to cool the flush of orgasmic complete. I wonder, would we be the perfect fit if I could raise one leg high enough to clench my thigh about your hip? Would we be the perfect fit in a universe where I could commit to having passionate, lust-driven sex in an alleyway with a married stranger on Valentine's Day? Nope, that universe will never exist, so I must desist. Seeing my eyes disconnect, you shrug and leave with your wife. Soon after, I exit the bar to go home, head fucked on Valentine's Day and alone. That's, a, that's incredibly powerful, that guy. <laughs> thank you, thank you. I'll... I think it's going to be nice for people to see that I can write something other than, um, I don't know, I write some pretty tough I write on some pretty tough subjects and the matter is quite dark and heavy so I think it'll be nice to I am going to have a few poems in the, in this next book that are, are a bit playful and fun and obviously with that piece and obviously I don't, I'm not going to go into the content of the piece we'll talk about the structural bit I'm not going to ask you a question yeah. it felt to me like that poem was wrote fairly quickly yes. so was it one that was it a piece that it, you had to draw it out, or did it just go like um, a series of machine gun bullets on the page? Yeah, it just kind of landed, and it was actually way longer, but I had to trim heaps from it um, because we only had like a four minute um, uh, segment on, on this uh, event that we were doing. So I had to, and they said to us, like, you have to like stick to this four minutes or whatever. So, um, so it was actually much longer, and uh, as is my usual form, uh, when I write something that actually <laughs> I really, I, there were some really good verses in there that I cut thinking I'd go back to them later and uh, I magically they've disappeared never to be found again so that's the poem <laughs> Old Mike Union is saying bugger <laughs> that's, that's going to get nicely I'm going to be a, I'm going to be a gentleman like that language today so. <laughs> now obviously I want to ask you both just to wrap up then obviously about this book then itself is the fourth quid book how, how far into it at the moment are you then? Is it a book that's is still in development perhaps next year? Is it sort of the year yeah, after? Yeah, absolutely. So, so basically, um, Neshka is planned. Our plan is that my very first book, Pieces of Humanity, I always wanted that to have art with it as well. So for the next 12 months, Nesh is going to be working on artwork for that book and will republish and also the Art of yeah. Fucked Up Love Poems. Yes. And I will be working on my novel because I have a novel that is written um, but it needs it needs to go through all the edits, so I'm going to take 12 months to do that. So yeah. and then we're hoping that we'll sort of bring out um, sort of three books the following year, kind of. Yeah, be 2024 yeah. that, and then one of the last busy year. Then yeah. 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 do you ever envisage you'll do another tour? Then? We want to yes. do another another tour. Um, I'm waiting for my youngest to get old enough that uh, his mother disappearing for three months doesn't phase him in the way, <laughs> which is only really about I was eight go- months I was going away. to ask you about that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, um, so yeah. So basically, when my youngest, um, he's sort of another eighteen months, and he will definitely be well on his way to living his own life and doing his own thing. So at that point, I really hope to come back to the UK for sort of three to six months, all being going well, um, so that I can focus on. Um, just sort of really writing, writing immersing yourself immersing myself and I will probably be joining Skylar from time to time yeah. for weeks at a time yeah, as, yeah, yeah three if, to six if, months if, 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 yeah. Yeah. But we've it's also, family life for yeah, me yeah. but, but we've also got been offered a very exciting opportunity which hasn't we haven't gone any further than having a discussion as yet but in, in America there is a, a woman who we know very well um, and she's written um, a novel and it, she's turning it into a movie and Ooh. she's asked us to come and perhaps um, do some workshops uh, for the before the premiere of the movie. So we may be heading to the US next year, late next oh, year to do good some luck. workshops. Good luck to the pair of you there, definitely. Thank you, so. yeah. good. Now, Obviously, to wrap up then, obviously, Shine, yes. where can people get a call to Shine? So if you turn up to Petersgate Tap tonight or any of the venues that we are going to in the next 20 days, um, you'll be able to get a signed copy from us. Yes. Um, otherwise, you can head to um, Dragonfly Publishing 
the website www.dragonflypublishing.com and there are links there to be able to purchase the book and alternatively you could go to Amazon UK and public, and uh, purchase the book there. Yeah, and obviously so. if you further feel Amazon.com and yep. who knows yep. what yep. else. Yep, yep. And, um, uh, but if you manage to come to our events we are also, Neshka has done some amazingly beautiful posters of her artwork so they will be selling as well. Um, they are limited edition uh, yes. posters, there only will be 100 of each of the drawings. There is about 60 drawings altogether. Wow. We released the first six at the moment, yeah. um, um, but they limited edition, they are numbered and signed, and they are um, very reasonable price. We're selling them at 15 yeah. pounds only, and you can't find uh, original limited prints like that. Yeah. So yeah. Excellent. Yeah. Now, if people want to, to speak to you two online, yes. where do you recommend they go to wrap um, with? Facebook, if you go to Artistic Word Enterprises, so there's a Facebook page called Artistic Word Enterprises, so you'll be able to talk to both of us on there. You can yep. send us a message or anything like that. Um, alternatively. alternatively, we each have our own private Facebook page, so mine's Sky Skylar J. Winter Author, Neshka. Um, probably best ways to do my website, artbyneshka.com, N-E-S-H-K-A, artbyneshka.com, and I've got all the links for everything there. Yeah. Yep. Brilliant, I'll get you both send the links over to me, and as PMs later, that yeah. way I can put it in the right up for you, fantastic. Yeah. So, Thank you. Well, that's it today, guys and girls, so it's been a pleasure today. Now I'm going to go get some tea now, and I think these ladies are going to go and get us all prepared, aren't you? <laughs> Drink? Yeah. <laughs> drink, yeah, we all love that word, drink. We need so. a drink and I need to like go prepare myself, uh, do some tongue twisters before I have to actually deliver poetry. Well, I, have, I have to bring all my art and um, I do have my original with me as well. I'm, I'm going to the pub next door to get yeah. some food. So. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right, that's it today, guys. It's been a pleasure. Thank Great so thing. Grateful, ladies. Thanks for Thank having you. us. Peter. See you all soon, guys. Take care. Spoken, mate.